I think it is important to see that prisons most often will damage people. They are there to let people suffer, and people suffer in prison. And the important point in a prison policy of any, say, educated country would be to try to reduce the amount of of prisoners, try to find alternatives to the prisons. And that very often has to do with... Hiya! Oh? I'm uh, uh, Nils Christie. I'm an, a criminologist by in my work. I'm educated as a sociologist. My first study was on uh, guards in concentration camps. I'm so old that I lived through the Second World War, and we had concentration camps not only in Germany, but also in Norway, and with Norwegian guards. To Some of them were sentenced for terrible behavior vis-a-vis the prisoners after the war, and uh, uh, most of them behaved uh, in an uh, acceptable way. And my little study far back in time, and that was the first study I made in criminology, that was to try to find, was it a great difference between these two groups, the killers and the non-killers, in the same situation. And under they were under German command at that time, and the prisoners were starving, miserable people from uh, Yugoslavia. And the sort of basic... Uh, finding, and a finding that has, in a way, put a stamp on my whole life, that the essential difference was to be able to see the prisoners as human beings. Come so close that you were able to see that that miserable, starving, dirty uh, person uh, who would drop a friend to catch a piece of bread, uh, that they were as we are if you had if we had been in the same situation i think there are certain uh, acts that any uh, state would have to react against but the question is not prison but the question is the amount of prisons how many and what sort of person do we put into prison and there it is a an important point in all modern and European states, that most of those we place in a prison, they are uh, representative of the poverty uh, population. It's poor people. It's, they have too much of nothing. They have too much of lacking money. They lack education. They lack housing. And very often they are in great loneliness. They have no close family, no wife, no children. The main problem is, of course, not sort of, or very often not the act they committed, but it is to see to it that they are brought into a better position than they were before they behaved so that they had to be sentenced. I think it is important to see that prisons most often will damage people. They are there to let people suffer, and people suffer in prison. And the important point in a prison policy of any, say, educated country would be to try to reduce the amount of of prisoners, try to find alternatives to prisons. And that very often has to do with bring them up to an acceptable standard of life. Then there are certain persons where... We need the authority of the state, and we had, of course, such a case in Norway when we had these atrocities of 22nd of July a few years back, where the offender, he exploded the state government's main building, and he killed, without mercy, the one after the other in a summer camp of young socialists in Norway. So it would be unthinkable not to react against him. And he got his sentence. But we have another alternative I think is so much more promising. More and more cases in Norway when someone hurts someone else. More and more of these cases, we try to bring them in what we call conflict-solving boards in, 
in Europe they talk about restorative justice. I don't like that because by many reasons, but um, it is a place where people can meet those who have done something unacceptable and those who see themselves often rightly as victims, and they can talk it over. And it is uh, an attempt to re-establish the relationship. And that is, of course, what we always have done before we got strong states. We got possibilities in the villages to meet, to discuss. I think uh, it's a solution with very, very many troubles. In a democracy where you could trust that the state uh, is a very, very reliable one, where you trust the politicians, it's okay. But if there are doubts, this opens a wide gate to uh, corruption and uh, misbehavior. So I'm not too fond of it. I think we should trust the judges and we should trust the legal apparatus and not have a sort of chance, an open back door. People uh, in such a situation can escape. It's a great danger for the trust in, in the justice of the system if anybody gets that, that particular advantage like this. But more important than that political part is to try to not to have too many people brought into the prison. And, but you are not too bad in Italy. Don't exaggerate. I mean, your prison population is nicely within the European limits. And this big database in England who tells about prison figures tell me that you have some 106 prisoners per 100,000. We have some 73 in Norway. But the United States, as you probably uh, know, they're up to 716 prisoners just now. So this ideal of democracy is the most incarcerating and most harsh uh, society uh, we know of in our modern uh, industrialized uh, society. Uh, and this tells you a lot about the political system as a producer of prison population. The U.S. system has a lot of features that create distance between poor and rich people. And characteristic feature of the U.S. prison system is, of course, an enormous overrepresentation of colored people in the prison. And they have sort of a system uh, with uh, sort of fixed uh, sentences that is difficult to come around. Sentencing table, it is called. And that sentencing table have enormous high levels of what they think people deserve. But one thing is what peop what you can think in abstraction people might deserve. Another thing is what when you meet the person called offender and see his miseries, I can think of myself. If I had done something deplorable and someone fetched me here in the night, took me to the police station and here I had the uh, future of spending uh, days, months, or maybe years inside a little room called a cell. And I got the degradation of being a prisoner. I think I wouldn't be terribly interested in a continued life. So isn't it, in a way, natural that people should despair? But we try, have, of course, to attempt to counteract this with, by making the prisons as human, as good as possible. And uh, it should be no end to the sort of attempt uh, to uh, liberate, uh, make the regime uh, so close to the ordinary regime for other people as possible. But you have, of course, in your system a special problem with so much organized crime. And I have full respect for the need to... We are faced with some of the big moral questions when we talk about punishment. And uh, coming from the same culture in Europe, it's very easy to remind ourselves and others on the question of uh, being so kind as possible and also 
to try to reduce suffering and pain in society. And here, to have a lot of uh, suffering that might be not completely necessary. So that may opens for thinking, how can we meet deviance in a way that care for our deep moral values. So thank you for uh, listening to me and all good luck for this country I'm very, very fond of. Bye-bye.